So, welcome to my talk. Um, yeah, sorry for my bad English, but I think you will get an idea of what I mean. It. Um, yeah, it's uh, all about uh, the talk about my uh, drawing application that we uh, have built for uh, blind users uh, with a uh, real-time tactile feedback device. So even blind uh, persons have or want to fulfill drawing tasks. For example, when it comes to school, they have to do uh, the geometric styles, um, mathematical functions, technical um, notations like UML or uh, in chemistry or whatever. And uh, even at work, when they're just uh, yeah, doing charts or uh, discuss with, uh, with other people, um, yeah, they have to do uh, drawings or they want to do drawings. And even at home, when they're doing it just for fun, when they are making arts or um, what I've uh, always he hearing is uh, that they want to plan their room layouts, for example, when they just uh, uh, want to buy a new kitchen or when they just uh, moving to another flat. So how does our drawing workstation look like? Uh, this is the setup we use in our evaluation, which I will uh, explain later on. So we have a standard laptop, which is this one that I have here, uh, with an external monitor where there is uh, running some kind of debug monitor, which is mirroring the uh, tactile output, which is um, displayed on the tactile device. You can see this here on the left side on the desk. Um, yeah, then we have mounted a 3D depth camera behind the display on the standard tripod, uh, mounted with the field of view downwards to the uh, drawing surface, in this case, uh, the tactile output device. We have also a wireless uh, stylus pen. Here, I will explain this in more detail later on. And we have some wooden blocks um, used for uh, the 3D depth camera things. Uh, which are from a child's toy puzzle. This is the device which, are, which we are using for our tactile output. Um, it is a pin matrix display. It is uh, yeah, capable to display only binary pictures, which means uh, pins can be raised or uh, yeah, lowered. Um, it has a resolution of about 10 dots per inch. And we use it with a refresh rate up to uh, 20 hertz, uh, but it can go up to 50 hertz, but then the changes are not longer feelable at all. So the display uh, size is about uh, 104 pins in width and uh, 60 in, in height. Um, yeah, there are 19 different uh, control elements surrounding the display surface itself, which can be used for uh, controlling uh, applications. And of course, it is very expensive. Uh, on the back of the device, the device we mounted a receiver for our uh, yeah, wireless stylus and we add some optical markers for the camera things. I will explain later on. So how should blind people draw or how do we think blind people should draw? Like we would do a sight person. So we just, when we're just setting up um, such an image, we just construct it, compose it, um, assemble it with several standard shapes. We just place them and yeah, uh, manipulate them. And so we think uh, blind people can also do drawings. So the question uh, we are focusing on in, in uh, this work is how to get those basic shapes that you can later on manipulate or place or just reconfigure. So, and we came up with four different ways to do this. The first one is a classic. It's a menu-based thing, uh, like we would do it in as uh, sighted persons. We just choose from a palette of standard shapes, and then we place it in, in the drawing. So how does this work here? So uh, these are screenshots from the uh, from debug monitor, which I have uh, shown in, in advance. So you just simply hit um, a key on, on the device. In this case here, it's uh, on the red side. And then a display, uh, um, a menu appears on the display, which is text-based. In this case here, uh, this is Braille text. And you can hear it uh, also via text-to-speech output, uh, which you have selected. You can uh, navigate through the menu by uh, using this cursor keypad here on the right side, um, yeah, which is 
uh, really good usable. And when you just select one of those uh, entries, in this case here, this is a square, um, then it appears in the middle of the, of the screen on the drawing surface. You can directly feel it, and uh, it will also be placed on uh, the, the drawing application which we are using. Uh, in our system, we are using the free uh, to use and uh, open source drawing application LibreOffice Draw, uh, which can also be used for commercial contexts. The second one is very close uh, to the first one, to the menu-based thing, so, uh, but it's a bit more natural drawing, I would say, so it's a gesture-based uh, method. So this means uh, to some of those uh, basic shapes, there is a gesture related, which, uh, uh, yeah, which you can perform on, on the display. So how does that work? So you have the drawing uh, surface here with our rectangle drawn before, and you have to press a button uh, on the device, and because the device itself is uh, touch sensitive, you can perform gestures on it. In this case, the user does uh, a circular-like uh, gesture, and uh, when it releases, uh, when he, he or she is re releasing uh, the key, um, then the gesture will be interpreted, and the related shape will be placed in size and position uh, close to the gesture the user has performed uh, on the drawing surface, and is directly uh, feelable. And it will also be placed in uh, in the drawing as well. So when it comes to drawings that are more complex, uh, which are not consisting only of circles and rectangles and triangles and straight lines, um, then there is the need for freehand drawings. So freehand drawings, we as sighted persons use uh, pencils, and also we are uh, looking for uh, yeah, enabling blind persons uh, to do this. So we have this uh, digitizer pen here, which is freely available on the market. You can buy it in every, in nearly every Amazon online shop thing. Um, it is an infrared and ultrasonic uh, thing, which is emitted from the pencil tip. And it is, has a very high resolution with uh, 1,200 dots per inch. Um, yeah, uh, this makes it very hard uh, to, to draw on this irregular surface uh, on, the, on the tactile pin matrix device because the pins that are risen or the holes that are existing for the pins uh, will harm uh, drawing on this, on this surface. So we have uh, yeah, tested several pencil tips. Um, and we came up with uh, this solution so that we use um, a very short-haired brush-like tip, uh, which is not harming the display, and uh, also the display is not harming the interaction of the, of the user. But it has also some drawbacks. Uh, for example, when you're pushing the pen over the, uh, the surface, this feels very strange. So it is more for pulling it like we would do, uh, but uh, blind pe persons are not so used into using pencils or uh, pens, so they are also pushing uh, the pen over the surface, so this uh, feels very, very strange. Um, another drawback is that this pen needs a line of sight to uh, its receiver, which is mounted on the back. So uh, when a user just yeah, comes between uh, the pencil tip and the receiver, then uh, there is no, no more connection and no more data, data will be sent. So how does the interaction look like? Okay, so a user just uh, draws with a, with a pencil on the tactile uh, display, and while he or she is drawing, a traceable path is, uh, yeah, is displaying on, on uh, on the tactile output uh, device so that the user can feel with the other hand uh, what he has drawn. So when he lifts the pen, uh, then this traceable uh, line uh, disappears and the uh, stored data, the position data of the pen uh, will be turned in, into uh, yeah, a path into uh, a busy curve, uh, which is then placed on the drawing surface, which, which is um, also be yeah, smooth in some way. The fourth and the last uh, modality we have implemented is yeah, a more 
direct way to the real world, which we are saying. So it's making some kind of photos of objects. So, uh, but not really photos, it's more about um, yeah, capturing the object silhouettes, which means so the shadows of, uh, of real world objects that you can use uh, to, to create graphics. So how does this work? You just simply uh, yeah, build your whatever you want to capture uh, on the device with, with real world objects that are uh, lifting a little bit from the, from the drawing surface itself. And uh, when you have finished this, you just press a button combination. Then the 3D depth camera uh, makes a screenshot or makes a shot out of it and uh, applies a simple depth segmentation. Uh, this is yeah, combined with the ground truth, uh, which is taken before. So uh, with, with an image with no objects on the drawing surface, and then there's a simple uh, segmentation on this. And it is uh, brought in relation with the optical markers that are placed uh, around the edges of the drawing surface. And in the end, um, those elements or, or these, these captured shapes uh, will be displayed uh, on the tactile display and also will be placed uh, in, in the drawing sheet as well. So you see that the outlines are uh, not that straight, so um, this is because of the low resolution of this depth image, so uh, it isn't that fine-grained, so uh, this is the reason why this is, and also the rounded edges, this is coming from the vectorization process that we, uh, which we are applying. Okay, so we did an evaluation on this process. Uh, for um, that, we just uh, yeah, let blind users redraw or copy some pre-prepared images. So they are given to them as tactile graphics. And uh, those, those images have to be yeah, very simple. Um, all of them have to be the same number of elements. And we just came up with the idea of this copying task because we don't want to uh, test the, the user's skills of drawing, uh, but we want to test our, um, our system. So uh, besides some questionnaires and of course some training with the system, there's this uh, copying task. And yeah, we use a within subject study uh, with uh, 12 blind users. Four of them were female. Um, all are legally blind and screen reader users and four of them were uh, blind since birth. Um, the age is between 25 and 69, and the test run took uh, very long, so with on average uh, five and a half hour, excluding pauses, this was a, a full day thing. Yeah, as I told, the image will be given in a fixed order, uh, but the order of the modality the users have to copy those images will be randomized. Okay, so let's see some results of this. I just present you the best results of uh, blind authors here. These are images from blind authors. You see with a menu uh, modality, uh, the images are very, very good um, and very precise. Um, even with the gestures, these are results from, uh, from blind persons doing the gestures uh, modality. Uh, the freehand image is also looking very nice, um, especially when you just bring back in your mind that they are drawn by blind persons. And uh, these are the best results of uh, yeah, people using those uh, object capturing thing. Okay, because this is science, I have some, uh, a lot of uh, numbers and um, things for you. Um, People were very satisfied with their results. Yeah, um, it doesn't matter um, with which modality or uh, which image they have drawn, they were very satisfied with their, with their results. In the end, um, one image took about 20 minutes, uh, less than 20 minutes uh, a person to draw, and a sighted control group needs less than two minutes for drawing such an image. So this means uh, a blind person will need 10 times longer than a sighted. We also uh, asked the NASA TLX um, questionnaire for every, for every input modality. And we see that um, the results in here um, are very low, are very quite low. So um, as lower the value, as better it is. So the menu interaction is uh, less exhausting for, 
for the blind users and uh, actuating with the stylus. So the pen in interaction is uh, the most uh, exhausting method that we have applied. In the end, we also uh, ask for the system usability, and, but for the overall system, uh, not only for, uh, for one modality, but the overall system, and with a score of uh, higher than 70, uh, the system usability was rated uh, very, very high and very good by the blind users. So a mean value for this rating for good systems is 68. So with uh, over 70, we are uh, much more than this. Uh, the main concerns are uh, that they, that blind users thought that when they have this camera set up, they would need uh, technical support. In the end, uh, we asked them, how would you uh, rank those four modalities? Which would you prefer? And we see that the menu is the most reliable uh, method in here, and users would prefer uh, this. And afterwards, there follows the gestures because it produces very uh, straight and very reliable objects. And then comes the stylus method. And in the end, they uh, would prefer this, the silhouette, the capturing thing, because of the additional effort and the technical things. Yeah, thank you for listening to my talk. And uh, yeah, I'm free for questions now. And I also don't know, um, don't have the best pictures of you. I also bring you the worst pictures. So these are the best for menu. And these are the worst for menu. Looking even good. So. Hello, um, really fascinating work, thanks. I'm Jingyi from Stanford and I had a question. So you showed that the menu was the most preferred um, option in your user evaluation and while I believe that it's like really reliable and consistent, I also feel like it kind of limits the expressivity of the system and compared to the other modes. So I was wondering if you could talk more about that and like what participants viewed as like what they valued more in that trade-off and in that range. Yeah, this is a good question. So um, our evaluation here just yeah, doesn't let the modality of freehand drawing and object capturing to shine so what they can do. So uh, with the menu objects, you are very limited in, in what you can draw. Yeah. Um, and, but this wasn't in, in mind of, of the participants because they don't have or uh, they don't had the opportunity to draw in this way before, so they are not thinking this far beyond the test. So uh, in the end, when we are talking about uh, what do you think about more complex drawings, for example, drawing a dog or whatever, um, then it comes in mind um, that it would be better when they have um, yeah, these, these modalities to, um, yeah, to do more freehand drawings like this year. These are the worst freehand drawings. Look even bright good when you think that these are blind persons. <laughs> Hi Jens, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, great work. Uh, Ugni Klau from University of Lisbon. Uh, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the drawing process, uh, whether you allow people to manipulate uh, individual shapes, and uh, if they wanted to redraw something, how would they do that, if that happened or not? Yes, thank you. It's an, it's an excellent question. Um, of course, um, I missed that in my talk because of the limited time. Uh, the system is, is uh, very powerful. Um, so when you have uh, added a shape to the drawing surface, you are free to manipulate it in any way. So uh, even with these, uh, with these control elements around the, the, uh, the tactile surface, so uh, with this cursor keypad on the right, you can change between different modes, for example, moving the object or scaling it in uh, both directions, uh, width and height, um, and also change out line or filling style and all these things and of course it is possible to delete elements and uh, to uh, to copy elements to paste elements again all these things are uh, are enabled and the most powerful option is that you can even manipulate uh, the freehand drawing Bézier curves uh, point by point so when you just made arrows uh, in in or uh, mistakes when, while you're drawing freehand you can go into this Bézier shape and delete the edge points or control the uh, Bézier uh, yeah, control points so that it fits directly to what you wanted to draw so 
And uh, I forgot to mention that this paper got a Best Paper Automation Award. And let's congratulate the authors and thank Yins once again for the presentation.